if you keep a fish tank at home, you will know that you need to aerate the water to replace the oxygen the fish consume. Now, I doubt you would be concerned about the energy cost of bubbling air into your fish tank, but if you were raising fish commercially, this would represent about 20% of your operating costs. In biological wastewater treatment, aeration of water is 60% of operating costs. Every municipal sewage plant in the world uses bacteria to break down the waste material, and the wastewater treatment is continuously aerated to provide the bacteria with the oxygen they consume. Almost every bioprocess you can think of that involves water, brewing beer, uh, fermenting protein, growing plants, needs oxygen. This adds up to a lot of aeration. It's estimated that about 2% of global electricity production goes into aeration of water. Now, various methods are used to get the air into the water, uh, using big compressors to blow the air into it, or using paddle wheels to thrash the water and mix the air into it. Uh, the oxygen gets into the water by dissolving from the air bubbles generated by those processes. Now, depending on the system, the size of the bubbles can range from centimeters down to micron sized, uh, the size of the bubbles in a pint of Guinness. Now, the industry challenge is essentially this. The smaller the bubbles, the faster the oxygen in them dissolves into the water. But making bubbles, smaller bubbles, costs more energy. Going back to the fish tank, we see the bubbles rising in the water, uh, but no surprise, big bubbles are more buoyant and rise faster than smaller bubbles. So once they reach the surface of the, wor the, wor the water, their work is done. So smaller bubbles have the advantage of lasting longer and so transferring more oxygen into the water. This helps but doesn't move the needle by much. This is where things stood until 2018. When my co-founder invented a way of making extremely small bubbles using the power of a light bulb. These bubbles are nano-sized. They're 1,000 times smaller than the bubbles in that fabled pint of Guinness. Uh, the, the bubbles, bubbles are categorized by uh, the size range. So we have nano bubbles at nano scale, micro bubbles at micron scale, and macro bubbles at millimeter size or, or bigger. This innovation has found a way to overcome the small bubble high energy cost challenge by making nano bubbles from macro bubbles, the big bubbles that are lowest energy cost to produce. The nanobubbles themselves are not new, uh, but the methods of making them are all in highly energy intensive. We use electricity to energize a mixture of large air bubbles, uh, which causes nanobubbles to form in the water. The process accelerates the rate of oxygen transfer from the large bubbles and produces oxygen enriched nanobubbles. The combined effect is a substantial increase in aeration efficiency by a factor of 10 over current water aeration technologies. Another unique feature is that the equipment can be used off-grid and powered using renewable energy. Our initial focus is on agriculture and aquaculture. Uh, early stage trial, trials have shown that the growth of plants can be speeded up using nanobubbles. The effect is so powerful that fertilizer can be cut by a third while achieving the same yield. We aim to increase the sustainability of agriculture from crop production to wastewater treatment by reducing input costs, increasing yields, and mitigating negative environmental impacts. Aquaculture has the highest conversion from feed to protein of any animal production system. Uh, it currently, currently 17% of animal, accounts for 70% of animal protein protein produced globally, and provides 3 billion people with a key part of their daily protein consumption. We aim to increase the sustainability of aquaculture by increasing the productivity and reducing energy costs of getting oxygen into the water. And we're also engaging with municipal and industrial wastewater treatment operators and engineering companies, and they are interested in increasing the throughput capacity of their existing plant 
by boosting the oxygen supplied and reducing their energy costs at the same time. Uh, lastly, I should note that the technology can also be used to increase the efficiency of water desalination and for cleaning and sanitization of water and water handling equipment. I hope I've given you an insight into why we think this breakthrough in water aeration technology will have a substantial positive impact on sustainability and the carbon footprint of the bioeconomy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.